Hi, it's Mark Arnold on the Fun Ideas Podcast, and today we have two special guests. I have to my left, Camden Spees, who brought with him Ben Olson, who's down below. <laughs> How are you two tonight? Good. Good evening, gentlemen. Doing well, thank you. All right, and um, I figure we just have a little chit chat about what uh, Ben's doing with uh, the Chuck Jones Gallery and anything else you want to talk about. You know, it's pretty free form. We're pretty casual here. Um, I guess my first question would just be, uh, Ben, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got interested in artwork and painting. So, uh, and thank you, Mark, for hosting me on this. I really appreciate it. Um, I got it when I was five years old, right? I remember, I remember the inkling of Saturday morning cartoons and my big thing was Looney Tunes and, and three hours on a Saturday morning. And as I got a little older, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right, that uh, just hours of that on Saturday mornings. There was no VHS of this kind of stuff that was, you caught it live or you didn't catch it. And I remember being fascinated with this. And then in when I was 10 years old, so in 1989, Little Mermaid comes out. And my mom took my brother and I and a friend to go see it. And I remember being totally blown away with. Like Ariel's first scene where she's, you know, part of your world and the hair and the animation and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I want to do that. How do you do that? That's what I want. And, uh, and I was, I didn't care if it was a princess film. I didn't, didn't matter. Like I was blown away by taking drawings and stuff that I would see on TV is one thing. And then you see it on the big screen and it takes a bit of a different effect. So long story short, from 10, I knew what I wanted to do. And uh, I, through high school, I continued art programs. I had almost all independent studies my senior year which was all in art and, and learning this new computer generated animation thing in 1997 so I used Ray Dream Studio if, if you ever heard of that Ray Dream Studio and uh, had to learn it had to animate something in it and then had to teach other people how to use it so I got into Ringling School of Art Design I got the tuition bill couldn't afford that one it was 34 to 36,000 at the time not with supplies <laughs> and uh, ended up going to community college. And my dream was animation. I wanted to be an animator for Disney. That was it. That's why Ringling was my thing. When I got in, I was ecstatic. I loved hand-drawn animation. It was just, there was such a fascination with bringing things to life, right? And I was always more interested in the drawing aspect than the finished product, like the ink and paint. And of course, by the time you get into 19, you know, like Beauty and the Beast and stuff, you're using caps. So there really is no ink and painting, but right. that was my fascination. And um, so you take that into not going to the school that you really want to go to because you couldn't afford it, and, but going to a, a community college, having great professors, never graduating. I took a, a two-year school. I was still there four years, like two years after I should have graduated, never graduated, started a job in photography do, uh, for yeah. Auto Trader. I'm taking cars and motorcycles, sure. And, um, and you know, felt this thing that was out of place. You know, I'm like, man, I, I, I still love drawing and painting. Um, you know, I, I did, I, I got into a really good art school. That's what my love was, but I just couldn't find it. So I kind of took my own path. And by the time I was 28, got into a job in design. And I think at that moment is when I realized that I was a creative, not just an illustrator. Mm -hmm. And therefore I could then, I could then figure this creativity out in design and film and writing and painting and whatever. And it was fascinating, still loving, mind you, Chuck Jones. And, and, and like, he was always my favorite director. All the cartoons that I watched when I would go back and look at them, almost all of them had directed by Charles M. Jones. So um, when I was in high school, even I had, the, I, I got his, uh, I don't have it with me here. It's up in my library up in front, but I got uh, the Duck Amuck, right? And I had oh, yeah. his biography. And I looked at that because- The or the, the sequel? No, no, I have Chuck Redux also, but I, I was just the first one with the yellow cover. Yeah. And I was, Bugs Bunny was on the cover and I would digest animation, right? Drawing, animation, cartoons, all throughout. And so in high school, the library obviously gets bigger. And I, and I, I, I drew Drip Along Daffy was the first drawing I drew out of that <laughs> book. And so I, I sketched that. And then I would sketch everything he had in there. And then I would read about, you know, what his stuff was. And I just, I took it in. He Frank Johnson or uh, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston book. Um, uh, help me out, Camden. Uh, illustration of life, I think. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It's yeah. it's 
Yeah, yeah the illusion yeah. of life. There you illusion go. Of life. Thank you. Yeah, and I have it. I have <laughs> that book. Between too. the three of us, we'll get the title. <laughs> right? We'll get it. So between those two books, those three people to me, uh, and Glenn Keane, he didn't have a book at that time, but like watching his animation, that was my big thing. So fast forward into the design and using illustration and stuff in there. It's going interesting and I'm, I'm learning more. And I end up like uh, Craig, Chuck's grandson comes out to a, an event out here in Schaumburg and it was for Looney Tunes and, and, and uh, Chuck's, you know, Chuck's art. So they were the, the gallery and I met him and he brought the Oscar out. And uh, I was with uh, the previous Mrs. Olson at the time and we had two kids. And so I was all ecstatic because I'm like, Chuck's grandson is here and he's brought all this amazing artwork and like original drawings, you know, and um, production drawings, which that is what I nerd out on and uh, met Craig and we hit it off. Hmm. I, don't know what it, I don't know what it is yet, but there's something here and I'm like, are we, are you talking to me still? Like, this is me. <laughs> and, um, and so we would chit chat every long now and again. And um, four years, I was in like 2008 and I got one, that was my first piece of fine art, like animation fine art was, I have it up front in my library. And it was from Marvin the Martian in 1980, I believe it's where he's wrapped up in like the, you know, kind of like a, a mummy. They did like the hasty hair. They had uh, it was like a limited edition. Yes. Yeah. Well, but it wasn't. It was the actual, just the production drawing. So it's actually one of the drawings from the film, and but yeah, it's from Hasty Hair and um, like the straight jacket gun or whatever it was when he right. winds up um, K9 and uh, and Marvin and puts them over there, um, just gruntled Martians or whatever the sign says. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I got that piece, and I was. That, that's a big deal for me. That was my first piece of animation fine art. And so years later, um, I'm going through some stuff and uh, the previous Mrs. Olsen is about to become the previous Mrs. Olsen and, and it's kids and it's all this kind of stuff. And I remember just kind of being a shell of an individual, right? Because it, it'll that, that kind of stuff will take it out of you. And I, and I wasn't into painting or drawing anymore or anything. It was just kind of, ah. And I remember Craig reached out to me because he had a similar experience and uh and he was like hey um i want you to come out i want you to come out here to california for chuck's 100th birthday i'd like you to be my guest this was in 2012 yeah and and i was like <laughs> what and i'm like okay and and i said sure because we had kept up you know conversations and whatnot they had the chuck jones center for creativity that they were doing so i remember going out there for in 2012 i uh, camden i think that's probably the first time i met you no, I was, no, I was, I was, well, I never met you until I was like 15. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I was close. So I pre <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely was not there when I was 12. I was, I was been in fifth grade. Okay. All right. So pre Camden era. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I went out for the Chuck thing and June Foray was there, you know, they had the whole hundredth birthday. Um, I was chit chatting with Leonard Malton and just gushing over him and, and like it, the things that you've shown and written about animation and what it's effect on me. I just remember being in this thing. Can't believe I'm really here, you know? <laughs> and Craig was so generous, like the family's so generous and, and just loving it. And so we hung out, I got to experience this whole gigantic thing. And then I started to get involved with Red Dot for the center. And they're like, well, would you put a painting in? I, well, yeah, I'll put a painting in. And I did Drip Along, because that was the first sketch I ever did. And mm -hmm. I did it in little pixels. So I had, huh, I took a 12 by 12 canvas and I did uh, half inch squares on the whole thing. So that's a lot of squares, right? <laughs> and then I did pixel art with it. Yeah. And did this whole thing and that was my first thing and i remember somebody bought it for like 150 bucks and i was and i was ecstatic i'm like i can't believe anybody paid any money for this not that i <laughs> thought it was bad but it was just someone someone it's different it's not you know a traditional thing like that back there or even this which isn't done and nobody's seen yet because it's not <laughs> finished um but so that was kind of the kickstart to it and then uh ended up getting to do fine art with them and my first showed him my first piece, which was a rabbit fire inspired piece, because that's one of my all time favorites. 
And, uh, and then it kind of took off from there. And then I got involved with the center at, for creativity. They asked me to join the board. So I've been on the board for a while. I opened up the center here in Chicago. So I do Chuck Jones, big events. We do Chuck, uh, Craig comes out for this year's Bugs Bunny's 80th. So our home team wears bugs that I'm designing. The, the visiting team will wear Elmer. <laughs> mm. and, uh, and we got involved. And so it's been this awesome relationship with the center and all the work that the center does. And then the fine art, which until COVID hit last year, I, I mean, I, I, maybe I did a dozen paintings total, right? Mm. In, in four or five years. I didn't do a lot because I, had, I have a design business. That's my main source of income is the design agency and I'm in year 13 of that so uh that takes precedence and then last year everything came to a grinding halt hmm. literally and you couldn't have events all my clients that did trade shows and galas and everything else that I branded out guess what gone and so um we switched to this online thing the zoom thing that we're in and mm -hmm. uh and I and teaching, you know, art classes. And then I, I did, Craig was like, let's do a creative side chat. Let's showcase some of your artwork. Well, I, don't, I don't have any new pieces. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got to paint some. And so I did a, I did a um, Robin Hood Daffy piece. Cause that's also in my top, it's hard to pick a top five, but it's right up that's there. Linda's favorite too, I think. Oh yeah, it's, it's Linda's favorite. Yoinks in a way, bam, every time I still laugh. <laughs> and so I had that and I had a, they have the Hanna-Barbera stuff. So I did a Dino. Oh yeah, I saw that. I saw that. That's one of the ones I sent. I sent to you, Mark, to see. I think mm -hmm. it's that stripey style, that pop art style. I have two different styles of painting. I have the pop art, which is the stripe stuff, and then I have yeah. this oil. Yeah, I saw a few and things so, on your web website. So yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was. Uh, it was kind of one of those things where I'm like, I have two pieces, and so we're talking about Chuck and whatever, and and um, the, you know what we're doing, and, and it was a good show. And mm -hmm. then uh, and then I started to host a couple of others for them. Um, and then we got to Comic-Con week and they were like, Hey, we're going to do Comic-Con. I'm like, <laughs> all right, that's awesome. And they're like, we need you to be the host for Fabio Napoleone. Okay. Didn't know him at all. Mm -hmm. Now we're, I consider him Fabio. If you watch this, I consider you a bestie, man. Cause I love you. Um, we'll <laughs> chit chat. Love that dude. And then Tim Rogerson, friend of mine, good friend of mine. Love that guy. Tim Rogerson, stupidly talented. I got, I bought his artwork. I bought one with Jerry Eisenberg too. Yeah. I got to, and Jerry, Jerry and I are buddies now. Jer, Jer and I, as I like to call him, Jer and I uh, have done two shows. We're going to do another one. And he's got rare footage that he shot on the lot with his little. Oh, yeah. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen some and of that. We, I, I think, think Stu showed some of that. Yeah. yeah. Stu, Stu, our friend Stu Shostak, I think, showed that. Like, it was really hard for him to get it. I bet, I bet, I bet Jerry's going to show what um, the, the same pile. I don't know, maybe different. It, but at least you wouldn't have Stu's audio commentary in the background. That's true. Well, I, I take it all. He's, I don't know what's on it totally. Um, I just know that they, uh, one of our, Scott's digitizing it and it's going to send it. And so Jerry wants to go through this stuff. And I'm like, um, yes, let's go through that. So I got I Jerry. I have to read Jerry for, a, um, because for my historian's craft essay, we have to write a 13 page paper and I'm writing out of Hanna Barbera. I've got Willie on Monday to talk to him. I've been trying to reach Jerry, but. Well, I, I got an email, man. I got Jer and I are buds. So if you need, if you need something, I will, I will make that connection for you. Cause you know, I, what I found too was like in, in that in interviewing. So take this change of world thing. Right. And I'm getting to interview guys that are legends and like just right. chit chat with them. Some people I've never even met before. And uh, we get to comic con week and they're like, okay, um, here's the run of show. Right. We got this. We got Willie Ito was, was on one and uh, Tim Rogerson, Fabio Napoleone. You then, the, Schultz, the Schultz family, right? Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. The, well, no, it wasn't the Schultz family. Tom Everhart was, I think, for Jones Family Gathering. Mm. Um, I forget who the, the, there was another one in between, but they're like, we need you to bookend Sunday. Mm. I'm like, we need you to bookend Sunday. Like, you're on. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, well, I've only, I've only done like um, those two pieces. So in a very short time, this was one of them. I actually started this painting while, while it was on. I did eight concepts, seven got approved, and I went right to paint. Mm -hmm. And Bat Splat was one. There's moments, I have a wait for it series. And the whole idea behind that is it's the moment right before the whatever it is, right? <laughs> and, yeah. 
And, 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 and what I loved about um, his bat suit is I love the look on his face when he's just, you know, and then he's, he's got it going and just right into the cliff wall. Like <laughs> Chuck was so brilliant at mm-hmm. gags and him and Mike Maltese, what they would write. It was hilarious. So this piece was one of them. And I had a style that I was, that I had, but I'm like, it needs to evolve a little bit. So I started like, that's the actual Grand Canyon. And that's an mm-hmm. actual shot from, from um, I forget what point it's at, but it's, that's an actual picture, but I wanted to paint it in my style. And I'm like, I love the Southwest. And I think there's a lot to do. I, I was painting um, Maurice Noble style backgrounds. I did a watercolor of like 65 for the 65th anniversary of Wiley Cody and Roadrunner. And mm-hmm. it was in that um, Maurice style. And I love, I love his, and, but I'm like, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to put them in real settings. Right. But, like they did the first couple, they did the first couple and like they, um, Mark wasn't, I think it was Phil DeGard who was the layout person, I think, yes. of the early ones. And they, and they had a realistic, like lifestyle desert. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can totally tell the difference between the two styles. Right. And what I ended up gravitating more toward was Marisa's style. Um, and, but I would watch what, you know, I would look at stuff that he would sketch real life. And then I would see the, how that would, uh, come out in his designs his design was brilliant and that was like another reinforcement of you're not just an artist you have to look at this as a I mean you're an artist but you got to be a designer you've got to think these things through and so like that piece the original sold before I here's the mistake I made and it's not a mistake but it's just <laughs> a thing that happens and then Robert will tell me be like I have to wait now until I post anything here do you want to see what that what I, they haven't let they haven't posted yet so technically I don't know, whatever, we're gonna just show it. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to do an experiment. An exclusive here right now. <laughs> so I love different surfaces. And what I loved about the skate deck thing, I here's my Wiley sketch on the back, <clears throat> was <laughs> so there, there's it's upside up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So what I loved about this was not just painting on it, right? But actually painting for the medium. So if I'm gonna paint a skate deck. It, and I'm painting the underside of it. What is it going to look like? And so I wanted <laughs> Wiley County and pocket shoes, right? And so he's on the board right now. He's on right, the yeah. board. And he'll never get away from him because he's not that, he's not, he'll never be as fast as the Roadrunner can always catch him. So I wanted to paint for the thing. So this is, I mean, they've priced it out and everything. They just haven't released it yet. So I can't release it yet and like post it on my social media. So here you go, Mark, for you. Yay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I gotta be honest, I just did a piece for Jerry and it took me two months to get the gallery to approve. It just let me have have just a couple of pieces and Carol just kept bugging him and bugging him and it just and it took a while. It does, it, it, it takes a bit. I had, I had Marvin pieces, well, and even this. So what I'll do is to give you an idea, like I love black wing pencils and I'll, mm-hmm. I'll credit Chuck for that. Um, there's just something about the feel of the pencil. So what I'll do is I'll do my concept sketch. So this is my maestro concept sketch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll do this and then I send that, I'll photograph it, I'll send it in. And then I either get notes or I get approved or I get no. I've only been told no once, which is fine. <laughs> uh, so then it'll turn into like where I'll go to paint. So hopefully that's not too shiny, but Orion funny. is like this is their, Orion, the actual uh, <laughs> And Orion the Hunter, like mainly because like that's my homage to like Elmer Fudd somewhere in the background. But it's this whole idea of this is the actual Hollywood Bowl. If you right. look at a picture from the state out and how the mountains go. Mm-hmm. And I guess I've got to put the little fly in and the, the Q stick with the chalk. But I'll go to that. No, they, I'm just curious, Ben. Yeah. I was, this is like you did all the if you were painting during also during coronavirus, I gotta ask, you have little kids. So do you paint in your office? Because because I'm just asking because I mean that would probably screw something up. I, uh, if... So get this. Um <laughs> I, I have I, well, so to I've been I have a I have four. I have a um I have a 16 year old about to turn 17. I have a 15 year old that's about to turn 16. And then I have a four-year-old about to turn five and a two-year-old about to turn three. The two-year-old and the, th- the four-year-old have been with me 
uh, my daughter, Michaela, has been with me since she was two and a half months old. And Hunter has been here since he was five weeks old. I raised both kids while working the full-time job of running my design agency and painting and running my nonprofit. And it all happens in this. So what you can't see is if I were to turn the monitor around, I've got a library in front. I've got a giant screen. I've got about 4,000 square feet. There's a ball pit up there. There's a bounce house over there. There's all kinds yeah. of stuff. And I, right? and I figured out this rhythm to things on how I can raise kids from like, we went from feedings and bottles and diaper changes to, you know, food and what, but I got it down. And so every single day since for the last almost five years, coming up, this is what I do. So I do it all at the same time. Hmm. And uh, I've got one painting only that my little one took a green brush to, which is I'm doing this Mr. T tribute in the pop art style. And he took a green brush to it. <laughs> it's over there. And I'm like, oh, I, I did so, But when it comes to like these, so he'll go and he'll be like, daddy, is it dry? I'm like, no. Okay, I can't touch it. <laughs> you cannot touch it. And, and he won't. He'll leave. And they know now, I mean, it, it's part of just training them in the environment, right? And so like yeah. my, all my sketch stuff, like, desks they can draw they can paint they got their own stuff but they know that there are certain things that they can't you know that they need to ask right before they do anything and that's just kind of part of it so really camden not bad five years almost one incident and not on a chuck piece because <laughs> that would that would suck to repaint you could just say it's a special duck so up piece <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right yeah, there's bugs and he's just screwing with me. So exactly. it's, it's been a blast. And I, I think I've got like tw 18 to 20 pieces that I've done since last May. Yeah, you, you hadn't concluded that because you were saying you'd only done like 12. And then you said I was going I did. And then I didn't know how many did you do, you know. So how fast do you usually paint? And that was, like take take us through that one painting, you know, uh, if it's not too complicated, I mean, with like a zillion characters, what's the average amount of time that takes a painting from sketch to final product? So from sketch, and I'll take um, Scenic Root, which is this one right here. Okay. Um, that one was probably a good like 70 to 80 hours start to finish. Okay. Right. And then like this one right here, Maestro is, is we're right around the the 40 hour mark so a good mm -hmm. solid week i've got about another six or seven hours to go and then it's done so figure something a little bit because that is actual size that's a it's the limited but it's an 18 by 36 uh it's a uh, figure somewhere in between like the 50 to 80 hour range is my average for these and how how long do you paint at a stretch i mean do you do like four hour eight hours what <laughs> No, it's, it's, um, so because I've got ADD too, which is awesome because that allows me to do like a lot of things at once. Yeah. And so I'll have four paintings and I'll have sketches going and while paint's drying, maybe I'm spending two hours on this. Right. Mm -hmm. And I get it to a point where if the paint's still, like I love working in oils. If it's still, um, where I need it to dry before I can build on it specifically in a mm -hmm lighter days I won't touch it and then I'll come back and do another three hours and then on scenic route I did the entire background start to finish in a solid week just the whole way through and then I let it dry for a mm -hmm. week and then I did the characters on top so and then I do the sketches too so part of Chuck is I do uh, colored pencil on half tone or black paper seems to go really well to sell <laughs> so and I love it it's just it's a fascinating medium to blend and I like soft core colored pencils. So like the Prismacolor Premier. So I'll sketch, which does not take me as long while this is drawing and I'll just keep hopping back, back That's and cool. forth. And I, I need, I need like four to five things going on at once when it comes to the fine art stuff, simply because of, think of it like a conveyor belt sort of. Mm -hmm. And while one thing's sitting, I can get the, so that by the time I'm done within like a two week period, I've got seven pieces. Mm -hmm. It may have taken me like a month and a half to get there, but I've got, and off we go. Now, are all these uh, commissions, like, are they pre-ordered or are they just like, I think I'll do, you know, Duck em Up today, you know, or I think I'll do Robin Hood Daffy today. You know, is there, do you get assignments or do you get 
free reign to do whatever you want. Um, I get free reign to do whatever I want. That's and, cool. <laughs> um, there's things that, yeah, yeah, not bad. There's things like, so for instance, the skate deck, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, here, I'll show you this. Here's a the skate deck is, that was a, I'm experimenting. So what I usually have to do is I have to submit a concept, right? Mm-hmm. And then in that concept, that's where either they'll make a note or they'll go ahead and approve it. And then I can go to paint with the sketches. I can just sketch. So I don't have to have that approved. It can just go and it flies or it doesn't. And the recent Marvin ones that I did, I did, I'm doing the steampunk series, right? Mm. And the steampunk stuff is gone. And, and I've got an evil Sherlock Holmes and, and canine Watson. That's the premise. So I'm building this cast of villains, steampunk style with Wiley and Gossamer and the evil scientist and the witch hazel. And the whole idea is, don't tell anybody, Mark or Camden, but the whole idea is there's 20, there's 25 letters left in the alphabet, right? And maybe we're going to throw a couple of symbols in. Marvin and Daffy have not clashed on all but only one so far. (laughs) What else is on the other planets? So (laughs) <laughs> I've got this whole thing that I'm building out right now and it's all steampunk style in this like um, sci-fi steampunk. And I just did these and so they sold and then sometimes they'll come back and be like, uh, like I just got one this week. Somebody loves my style and they dig or whatever and they'll ask for something particular uh, like a Marvin and a canine on the moon with a whatever and Marvin has something in his hand. Could you do something with that? Sure. Okay. And then they'll set the price they'll tell me what that is. And then they'll clear that with the collector. The collector goes, yes, pays for it. And then I start. So sometimes I'll get commissions in like that, which I'm totally open for. Most of the time, like this stuff, I'll send just a sketch and then it's go nuts. So I love the free reign and the Chuck Jones people, cause I've got buddies of mine who do Disney and star Wars and stuff like that. Disney particulars a little, especially now a little bit. We noticed your star Wars in the back. Huh? We noticed the Star Wars memorabilia in the back. <laughs> I've got a Boba helmet. I could, we could nerd it out on Star Wars for. I just picked up the mini, the mini Mando. I mean, wow. come on. <laughs> you know, if we're if we're gonna if we're gonna go into, I got stuff. Uh, you know, well, um, mine so, is well, mine is like this. <laughs> all um, right. I've actually, got, that that uh, uh, actually that uh, kind of makes me wonder: I've Are got, you allowed or, if you're? Um, uh, have free reign are you allowed to do like mashups of things or are you like you can't do star wars and chuck jones together example would you like to see a star wars chuck jones ah, sure if you have one if <laughs> so he has uh, so, done it okay yeah i wasn't sure you know because i mean you're trying to do this arguably to sell i mean you know or are you uh you well, just and here's the thing with it you got to have, if it's a double license thing or more yeah. than one license uh, and they go, and they go to reproduce this for a thing, you have to have both on board, right? And, and so it gets a little trickier. Yeah. Um, like a guy that we just did with S. Preston, he does MLB and, and Disney or MLB and Looney Tunes. You got to have, you got, I mean, it's a double dip, right? Right. However, when we're in red dot, Yes. <laughs> 50 bucks right all the, mm-hmm. all the funds go to the center because that's the whole idea right so we donate the canvas but i wanted to do this concept because when the mandalorian came out mm-hmm. that is how i wanted to film star wars i'm sorry mm-hmm. not the sequel trilogy okay <laughs> seven i enjoyed eight i can't stand burn it at the stake nine tried to rewrite it <laughs> fine fine <laughs> right it, it tried and, and and bless jj abrams for trying to get there but Really, Ryan Johnson did enough damage to where I'm like, you you gave the middle finger to Star Wars and I can't take it. <laughs> Man, not that I have any feelings about this, right? Mm-hmm. But <laughs> you get connection. <laughs> the connection's all frozen here. <laughs> Come on. Hmm. Can you hear me? <laughs> Shoot, it's all frozen up here. I bought my own piece. Yeah, that seems like a gem. Well, 
consider like half the money went to the center, half the money went back to me. So technically I paid half price. <laughs> wow. Okay. And we've got a little salt and pepper going on, right? Grogu, Grogu's going to eat them. Michigan J Frog <laughs> has met, he's met his demise. That's going to be the end of it. And, uh, and I love that piece. So I painted it. And with Red Dot, I don't have to, we don't have to have approval or anything. And so it went and $1,650 later, some, a collector, a, pick, a 12 by 12, mind you, is what the size was. And it was gone. So raised a lot of money for the center, which was awesome. And then I got that piece. And it's, so that, that's kind of how I can do the Star Wars mashup yeah. stuff currently. Well, well, what about like, you know, Warner Brothers? Obviously you have license for Warner Brothers, but could you match up, you know, DC Comics or Cabrera with, or is that just a totally different range of free? So I can't, um, I can't answer that on camera. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's more of like, it, it's, here's how I get around the DC thing, because there's stuff obviously like in, in um, Super Rabbit and no, is that the name of it? Is it Super yeah, Rabbit? Super Rabbit, and then there's the thing tucked in later with Superman. Or yeah, Super, but Super Duck also. <laughs> yeah, and and then, the Bakimskins the, the thing is great. And then there's, then there's I, I, I told you, because you did a Super Rabbit thing, I'm like, well, you need to do a Snafu for man from the private Snafu thing. True. And so, well, and, and here's what, here's how I got around the DC thing, because obviously they're using Superman, right, for right. Stupid Duck and Superbugs, and then, and then Wiley Cody in his bat suit, which Chuck did in the green, and they, that way there's no, like, whatever, but what I did, here's what I did, I said, okay, um, I can use them in their form, mm -hmm. and I can, as long as I keep Wiley in his green bat suit, I can, put, I can freaking put him in Gotham City, why not? I mean, <laughs> and and so I did, I did, um, I, I did these covers like Jim Lee. So you all know who Jim Lee is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just got this in the mail. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's glorious. <laughs> I have a whole library full of hundreds of art books, but um, I love Lee. Right. Yes. So I love that Jim Lee and, and the Alex Ross, Alex Ross, super talented guy. He's been in the studio once and was doing some stuff and it was cool. And he donated a bunch of his artist proofs so that we could raise money for our foundation, which was totally nice of him. But I love his painting style also. So here's what I did. I took those covers and I did like poses with, because you can't really take Wiley out of the desert. Does it make any sense? Except when he has his bat suit on, I can put him anywhere in the city. So I have a, I have a Roadrunner gargoyle, right? It's all on <laughs> black paper and colored pencil. I did this whole comic thing with the lettering and everything. And then I did Wiley in his bat suit with up lighting, right? As he's standing on the head of the thing. And then I did the same thing with Stupor Duck and like Super Bugs, right? Where Daffy's giving him the eye because obviously he's second fiddle. No matter how much he tries, he's always number two. And, and Bugs is floating, right? But Daffy's on the ground and then Wiley's just kind of oblivious to whatever and he's doing his bat pose. So I get around that where I can homage those things if I do it that way and I stay true form to the characters because that to me is even funnier than if I were to just put him in a Batman suit maybe. I, but like I know that I know that Sylvester did a whole Batman thing too um, and um so, did, I mean, you can license Hannah Rivera character, Yogi Bear did one. Yes. Uh, which, um, which uh, what, I know that later they did a Green Lantern and the da Daffy one too. Yes. Well, and, and it's kind of one of those, like I, Batman is my number one favorite. Um, see, look at that. We could do, I could nerd out with you all guys. <laughs> <laughs> the little guns pop out. Um, so, <laughs> Um, Batman is my all-time favorite because he's the only superhero. He was the first superhero for me without superpowers that really had to, you know, other than being rich, right? But he had to work for it. And so that to me was more than Superman who was just like, what's up? I can laser you with my eyes, you know? And, uh, and then I can float around all over the place. So that mix of DC and these guys, I would, I, I'd love to try to find a way to do it. I don't know exactly. No. Like I'd have to have it okayed and, and it'd probably have to go to a specific, like a collector would be like, could you do this? And here's a commission that comes in. That's probably how it would end up happening. Unless by some miracle, we're able to blend that 
DC, you know, universe and stuff like that and have it make sense. I know DC licensed the Warner Brothers character. This is like their third longest running comic book series. Yes, and I've seen those. And that's why I was like, well, if you can do that, you know, yeah. But again, like for me, it's kind of having it make sense with that. And, and I go back to like- I personally prefer these, but yeah. <laughs> I, I think you beat me on the comic. Like I got a lot of comic books. But you, yeah, no. I've definitely beat you as you can see. You can see it. I no, I, it's, see it's off camera. I see your finger and your drapes. <laughs> right. Oh, shit. There's lovely blinds. You have some yes. lovely- <laughs> I'm glad you have Venetian blinds. That's good. <laughs> Um, so um, I have a zillion questions. Uh, I'll just rattle things off. Uh, who sets the prices for any commissions? I mean, is it you or is it the, the, the whole gallery or how does that work? Uh, so the gallery does. Uh, okay. nice. Oh, that's what's, next, that's what's next to my bed. Okay. Oh, just <laughs> you, I'll, I'll text you some pictures of my library, Camden. Wait till you see. Um, so, uh, what we could, well, I'm sure we'll have some synergies. So I leave it like my thing is, uh, the gallery knows like Robert, Scott, those guys, they know their collector base. They know what sells. Um, I am not like, a, you know, I'm not, a um, like Daniel, I love that dude hands down. Right. And I think he's the top. So like that or a Chuck or something like that. So I leave it to them. I'm like, you tell me what you think. And, and I, and I, I've never been like, that's too low or <laughs> you know, so like it, for instance, on like these paintings, um, that was the first one to cross over like the $3,000 threshold for, um, well, not, not that one, but the newest one I did, um, the two newest ones were the first ones to cross over the $3,000 threshold, which to me was like amazing. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then like the skate deck, I thought they were going to price it much lower than what they actually did. When show, I was like, okay, yes, we could do that. And so I leave it kind of, I go off their recommendation and then I just say, yeah, sure, that's fine. So even on commissions, they'll come to me like this week and they'll be like, okay, um, here's what the collector would like. Are you cool with that? Here's the size. So they'll specify the size and the medium that they'd like. And then based off that, they'll give me a price they recommend and then what my percentage would be after. And then I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever, just done and then I put it in my queue. Mm -hmm. I, I also have a question for you Ben about the gallery because mm -hmm. I've been to all of the other three but the, but is this is the center in Chicago and I gotta ask a question of the fall first what is Chicago land because the land of Chicago because it's labeled <laughs> Chuck Jones Chicago land and I'm, and I'm like so Chicago land is how we refer to Chicago and the surrounding suburbs so okay. it's like a metro area. So it's think a like, toddling you know, town. It, it, yes, thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> so when, when we were coming up with, because I'm in Schaumburg and Schaumburg is the second biggest economic district in the state, right? But I was like, all right, do I do Chuck Jones Center, Schaumburg, or really we service the entire Chicago area, including suburbs. Like we do stuff all over the place. We're down at Comic-Con at McCormick Place. We're down, you know, we're helping out community centers and in the inner city out here, like west of us. So Chicagoland is the all-encompassing. That's how we refer to it here as like our greater metro area. Got it. Mm -hmm. So you, Camden already mentioned it, but how, how many galleries are there then? Uh, is there four or more? Here, uh, San Diego, Costa Mesa, Santa Fe, and there's a pop-up gallery right now in Palm Desert. And okay. so they'll do pop-up. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm familiar with the San Diego one just because of going to Comic Con and seeing oh, yeah. it there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now, um, was this affiliated with the old Warner Brothers store? Is this kind of like a thing where, like, uh, the, all the old Warner Brothers stores kind of went by the wayside and, like, Ruth Clampett went off with her Clampett stuff? And then you guys are doing the Chuck Jones? They're the, they're the good it's story completely that Ruth independent. Clampett and Linda told me about that. that you should have them both on here because they both tell a great story about their connection, which is a really good story. <laughs> well so from from what i like the linda jones when she did linda jones enterprises and took on the the fine art side of things with her and mm -hmm. chuck that was separate from warner stores so okay. i believe they sold in warner stores mm -hmm. like it did work okay. but that's a separate thing so when warner stores kind of went away linda jones enterprises and all the fine art stuff that just that kept going mm -hmm. okay all and... of it kept going 
both both places kept going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, as far as, I mean, I know you're mainly doing Chuck Jones stuff, but I mean, do you ever delve into Frizz's stuff or anything else like that for, even for a commission, or is that kind of even off the table? No, I, you know, it, it, if a collector wants a commission on something. Yeah, like get, Yosemite it, Sam or something. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have a commission from Eric Goldberg of him, of me, if, of drawing of, of, you know what I'm talking, you know, mm-hmm. if, if it's, it's me being watched on TV by Bullwinkle, Fred Flintstone, Yogi Bear, and Bugs Bunny. <laughs> well, I, I'm not. I don't even think I'm allowed to do that because of Bullwinkle. You're not allowed to show that because I'm not allowed to show the Eric Goldberg piece that I have, <laughs> that has a whole mashup of characters that is not not allowed. But to answer your question, yeah, I could Yosemite Sam do any of those characters. Oh, okay. Okay, because I didn't yeah, know how I strict they are about it. Where they say it's really, Chuck Jones only. Yeah. No, it's really Looney Tunes. So, yeah. like, okay. think of think of whatever you would put the scenario in. Like, I have a piece that I want to do, and it's a western. And I did a Yosemite Sam piece, and it sold, and it was big, and it was I called it Mustacho because it was in the pop art stripey style, and he had this gigantic, you know, like twisty mustache. Um, and then I've got another one that I, I, it was approved. I never painted it, but it was bugs with a carrot in his holster. And you're kind of looking from tail forward and there's dust bunnies rolling across. And then it's Yosemite Sam coming through the dust in the old West town. I haven't painted it. It got approved like five, six, seven years ago. I just never painted it. <laughs> uh, what about like, I'm sorry if I'm asking too many questions, Mark. I, but what about like, you know, Hanna-Barbera or like, are you just free range to do that and then because with the, like, or the Hanna Barbera, or just mashups like the Grinch or Ricky Tikki Tavi, or stuff like that. Um, Ricky Tikki Tavi, I think we can do. Um, Grinch, <laughs> Grinch is a super. It, the whole Seuss like enterprises and, and what they have as far as what they do, and specifically Grinch stuff. Like I've done um, some sketches and whatnot, but to actually do a painting, um, even it's super finicky, and and yeah. sometimes kind of more of a hassle to try to get stuff approved and done so could i do a commission of that like a private commission sure through chuck jones i would do but um to do grinch stuff like i've there's been a couple things that i've wanted to do and i'm like yeah i don't know so (laughs) yeah it's all these little gray areas yeah (laughs) it's like when i did my to patty freeling book you know they did a lot of sue specials too and uh yeah it's like it's all their own stuff it's not owned by Disney anymore. It's not owned by Patty Freeling, not owned by Marvel or wherever, you know. Who you used Snafu. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's one, the one Snafu. exception, I guess, is Snafu. You could have used Snafu without, like, you could, you could use, you could just say it's Clampett's Horton hatches the egg. Yeah. Possibly. But it, it's it like, could I, there's a couple of Hanna-Barbera pieces that I'd like to do. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I can, all I do is, do is submit a sketch, you know, a concept sketch for it, but to do a mashup between Hanna-Barbera and Looney Tunes, I, I don't know how well that would go over, you know, um, they give me a pretty good free range, like I'm doing the steampunk thing, yeah. why not, like I have a, I have a reason why I'm doing it and how it's, you know, mm-hmm. it started off a, a red dot painting, oddly enough, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then it just, and it still sells, the limited still sells, so I still do that, and I'm like, man, I really want to turn this into something. So I can screw with things like that. Um, like there's some other Snoopy stuff that I want to do, yes. <laughs> but like Red Baron style, you know, and I'm like, and I have a particular, but again, it gets a little tricky. Mm-hmm. Now, I, do you I typically- Bob Singer and he said in, to this morning for my essay, um, which we should have him on here, Mark, but, but I just met him, so I couldn't ask him. Oh, <laughs> next time. <laughs> yes. Nick. But, um, but so what he said is like, you know, and I asked him at the limited editions, he said, you know, he said, I might get a request from a dentist and then it might go to become a limited edition or so-and-so, which is, I think, isn't that a lot of what happened with Chuck too? You know, like, you know, cause he did a lot of occupational stuff and all that. Yeah. You could turn, like, there are things that, um, for instance, the steampunk Marvin thing, that was the red dot thing and they turned it into a limited and they've done stuff with Chuck where they it sells you do a commission on something and then they turn it into a limited so that's yeah that's not uncommon now what i was going to ask is uh you mentioned working with oils but i mean do you work with every type of paint water paints and everything 
So Everything. wow. Okay. <laughs> So, and and here's here's why like there's um, everything has its own different thing right and what I love about oils is the fact that I love the manipulation that I can do for the length of time that I can manipulate the color and there's something in that texture like that specifically that I would never try to do in acrylics it's just acrylics and I don't really agree with each other too much of the time anyway but um, but the pop art style is acrylic spray paint plus acrylic paint and that kind of stuff and then watercolor like, so that's 65 that I did and that sold, that was like one of those things that sold that first show we did that creative side chat in May, right? Somebody mm -hmm. bought it and I love that piece and it was a good size piece. But what I love about watercolor is it's like a chemical reaction. You don't always know what's gonna happen, right? Mm -hmm. and like where oils, I can control that, you know? Right. Acrylics, I can control that, you know? Watercolor, I can try, I can guide it, you know? And, and what I love about that is there's certain things when you, when you like, and I, I credit Sandy Imperiority, um, who's my buddy Curtis's mom, who we would go into the Virginia City, Nevada, and we would paint for a week watercolor, right? That's all we would do, a plain air watercolor painting. And um, that medium fascinates me and frustrates me, but it fascinates me more than anything else. And then if you take marker to that, like the Copic markers and stuff, that has that kind of feel just faster on a sketch. So I love charcoal, chalk, colored pencil, ink, whatever. Mm -hmm. I love it all because they all have their different things and I'm allowed, I can express myself differently in those mediums. Cool. And then another question I had, did you ever meet the great, the great man, Chuck Jones or even Frizz or anybody, anybody uh, involved with the Looney Tunes past or present? June Foray once at the right. 2012, <laughs> right? which was a big deal. Yeah. And Eric, uh, Eric Goldberg, newer, right? Yeah. Chuck Jones too, as I like to call. Um, <laughs> I've got to meet him a bunch of times. That's been a thrill. But Chuck, the first time I, I met Craig was 2008. Chuck passed in what, 2002? So um, mm -hmm. I, nev I never did get to meet him or Maurice um, Frizz. And that it's one of those things that, you know, I, I know Linda well and Craig and, and I, knowing the family, like I kind of absorb that Chuck aura, you know? Yeah. And, and it just, and, and that to me is exciting. So while I never did get to meet the man himself, I digest obviously a lot of his videos and, you know, the stuff that he was said on what they've captured, but um, knowing the family has, that's my, that's my, you know, imparting of Chuck to me. Yeah. You I think we could get a hold of her. I think Linda would be easier, but you think we can get a hold of him if we can. It's been really difficult to get a hold of him. You think we can get Craig on here? Good get luck. anybody on my show. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could get, you could get Craig. You just like, like you got to do like what I do. You just got to nail him down. You got to nail him down. Craig, <laughs> come on. Come on, so, do the show. Hey, yes. we're on episode... 111 or 112 i forgot the numbers so oh. we're, we're yeah i've been doing this for about three years so That's awesome. um i did uh i did meet both chuck and frizz not together at separate times i'm not trying to brag and just i was asking and i thought we might swap stories but yeah both times was uh with chuck it was at one of the warner brothers stores and it was actually around the time that they were right before they're about to close up so we're thinking at 96 97 somewhere around there you know and uh i know frizz i met at an art gallery about 92 i think and uh you know it's like i saw a lot of these guys yeah just in their latter years and you know chuck was pretty cool he was wearing a big cowboy hat and he was pretty soft-spoken but you know he 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 meet, met and great met and greeted everyone pretty well um frizz was kind of laid back too but you know he was older too you know you're always thinking of being all you know because you know what i've heard but you know he was older at that point so probably more mellow so well you know i so with the two that i've gotten to meet and then gotten to know um mm -hmm. jer my buddy jer right mm -hmm. it would be jerry eisenberg and willie Eno. yeah he's good and so we, we didn't the jones family gathering in 2019 and they had the three tuners there right, right. and got to see them but it wasn't until this last year in 2020 when i got to interview jerry so we do a pre-interview for about an hour where i'm trying to digest where we're going with stuff and then i write my notes down so that i know what i'm going to do when i do the interview and um and then what was hilarious was like i got to know jerry 
and we hit it off had a great conversation sold a bunch of his art you know i bought his pieces he has this he did this gillette commercial with chuck and they i, I saw the art on the on you know that was coming up because i get to see obviously what we're going to be putting on for you know the, the auction site and stuff and what the gallery is selling and i looked at these two pieces and it was a it, it was two drawings that was for sale and it was the little bird little parrot bird and he's carrying the letters for gillette i believe it or not I mean, Mark, you and I share the beard. Um, Camden, <laughs> one day. Uh, so, believe it or not, I, I do use a Gillette razor when I'm doing neckline and this, right? And I have since I was like 16. Hmm. So, it was that connection to like Chuck had his hands on this film. He worked with Jerry, who I really like, and hmm. it's a product that I use. And it was That's done in cool. the 60s, and it was two production drawings. So I bought them. I'm like, I gotta have, I gotta have Jerry stuff. And he he emailed me afterwards sweetest dude right and he's like hey ben blah 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 he emails me. I email him back he emails me again and then uh and we kind of carry on a little bit and then we get to where we're coming up to jerry eisenberg too which was this last february i think we did mm -hmm. and uh and we were getting into marvel because we didn't get a chance to get into marvel and his time was stan do you know that dude had like stan and him were buddies did you know that yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I had a I had a re-election about Stan Lee and buddies with somebody when I talked to Judy Levito. And apparently okay. Stan Lee and Abe Levito, as well as a couple of New Yorker cartoons, were war buddies. They were and, and, and like they sent letters back and forth throughout Stan's entire career. I'm like, what? Yes. <laughs> well, so so um Jerry brings out these he, we have these like letters, you know, from Stan to Jer, right? Which that's like that's what I saw too. Yes, and they so, only wrote a lot of letters to people. What, which again, yeah, then they get into this email thing in the '80s or whatever it was, and <laughs> Stan's trying to tell them to be like, "Dude, you got to try this email thing. It's way easier." And um, so, <laughs> but, like, I'm talking with Jerry Eisenberg, and to 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 get to know him. So when we were doing round two, and he called me up, he's got my cell phone number, and I've got his number, and he called me up to talk about the show the night before. And, you know, it's like, I don't know if I'll remember, you know, if, if I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember more stories. I'm like, dude, you just told me like five. <laughs> but the, and, 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 the, and before you told me the five, you told me you couldn't remember any stories. I think you're going to do fine. And so Jerry and I are talking for like an hour and a half. And I'm, I've been getting to know him. And their, their, their mark is my another Chuck connection of somebody who worked closely with him. And then, you know, is imparting those things as well as still on his game, you know, drawing and doing stuff. So right. I didn't get to meet Chuck. I, I've gotten to meet some great people, you know, even like Eric um, Goldberg and stuff like that, who have been influenced heavily, worked closely with him. And so I, that to me is kind of like, it, it just kind of, you know, I get that second tier effect that makes me feel like it's a first tier. Right. Right. I know. I know how that feels. Yeah. But it's <laughs> awesome for you that you got to meet him because yeah. nothing beats that. Right. And it makes, I have to say, it makes me feel bad that, you know, I was like cash poor. I mean, he was selling things that were like your pictures. And it's like, if only I had a couple grand because, you know, you want to make, you know, it's Chuck Jones. You want to make him happy. And it's like, all I could do was just have him sign the little program saying, here, here. <laughs> it's like, but I wanted to buy something, you know. <laughs> What's cool about that, though, and, and I get this from like Craig and talking with Linda and stuff, too. Yeah. He loved that. Like the fact that you would go up and take an interest in his stuff, him signing and autographing your thing and a little doodle on whatnot. Loved it. Loved yeah. doing that. And it's, it's that, I think it's that kind of, um, that kind of character, right? Like his character and his willingness to talk to everybody, make sure nobody went with it. You know, like if you came out to see him and you stood in line, gosh, darn it. He was going to wait until he got to talk to you. Yeah. You know, and he did. And, he did. It was a very long line uh, when I saw him. It was this was in San Jose, California. If you're wondering where it was, and yeah, the line was it was in a shopping mall, and the line was basically considering it's a mall out the door, out the door of the mall itself, you know. And uh, he stayed there till everyone signed. You know, I just hung around in the shop. I had a couple of friends with me, and we just hung out and just watched him sign and talk to people, you know, because they weren't kicking us out you know nope. <laughs> you know and it was just really cool and then as it kind of wound down then we left but you know it's like i just was like oh wow you know <laughs> but for someone only... for someone like him who's a legend right yeah. and for him to sit there and appreciate everybody 
you know, like that, that to me, like if you ever get, like, there's some guys out there who are bigger, you know, they think they're bigger than the shoes that they're in and stuff like that. Right? <laughs> and really at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, we're creating. Yeah. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. But even if somebody comes out to like, I really love this piece you did or whatever, or, you know, they just want to do a thing. Chuck's, you know, like Chuck is like, I, I would say like the prime example for me in the creative field of someone at the peak, like who's, who's he's at the top, right? But he, he always took the time to talk to everybody and made you feel, and now obviously I don't have a personal experience, but of people that I know, and I'm sure you yeah, felt this way. You're right. Yeah. You feel like you two were just, just two normal guys talking about whatever, right? Yeah. And, and that thing of what, it wasn't that he was greater than you, he was equal to you. And that's yeah. how he, that's how he treated people. That's yeah. freaking awesome. So to be able to do this stuff for a guy who was like that and created mm -hmm. all this, that makes it all the more special. Mm -hmm. and I have one more question about what you're drawing and stuff, because I keep looking at the Bugs Bunny one to your left and I go, do you draw this stuff kind of freehand or like when you're doing it? Okay. Well, you're already nodding, but uh, do you ever put like uh, on your big screen TV, the frame you kind of want to replicate as it were just to kind of get the colors right or get the, the shapes right or whatever. Oh yeah. 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 I, there's reference all the time. So um, when I first started out to kind of give you that, like everything gets sketched and I do digital stuff. I, I love drawing on my iPad and I've got a Cintiq and I'll do that stuff too. Nothing. It's still nothing takes the place of pencil and paper and that tangible tactile feel <laughs> right and so what i'll do is i've got 134 inch which if i turn this around there's 134 inch screen and it's a projection screen and then i'll either i've got three 27 inch monitors here we all i work in all mac so I, i've got everything i'll have stuff set up and i'll sketch off kind of an idea where i'll have an idea for someone to be like i love this moment in the film well let me get that down because there's certain things that when I paint it, it'll be in my style, but I want that drawing, you know, that composition and just how the, the model of the character to, I want it to have that feel that I want. Like I wouldn't, I'm not going to buy something totally whacked. Right. I, I need to be able to feel that. Right. Plus I'm doing my Picasso line. My Picasso line does really well. And that's fun because it's highly exaggerated, but this stuff, yeah, I'll put the frame up. I'll reference that, but I'll hand sketch all of it. And then usually what I'll do with this stuff is I'll, I'll scan it in, right. Or I'll, I'll snap a picture. I'll frame it out, get all my stuff done and, and I'll submit my concept. And then if it gets approved, I've got a, a project, a mini projector and I'll go into a, a dark room that I have on the other side and I will reproject my drawing onto the canvas. Hmm. So for one, it's faster. And instead of me going through and trying to reframe my composition and especially on canvas, and if I get all my, I'll get all my main stuff down first, I'll go in and tighten up my sketch afterwards by hand, but I'll just project my drawing back onto the canvas and then I'll do, and then I'll do that. When it comes to the sketches and uh, what I've got to do for that on paper, that's straight up drawing every time. There is no projecting anything. It's, <laughs> I, better, I better get it right. Yeah. Hmm. Very cool. Now I, I read on your website, I went on just because I always make a little notes and stuff. Um, that you also teach among all the million other things. Are you doing that during this pandemic time? And when you do, what do you teach? Is it fine art or how to draw like Chuck Jones or a little of both? Both. So okay. um, pre-pandemic, I, I do where I've got students that I will mentor on a monthly basis, right? Once a month and we'll work on stuff. And there's serious art students that want to get into art school and have a career in the arts. So uh, I, I've got two students right now at um, SCAD down in Georgia, so, so uh, Savannah College of Art and Design. And then I've got another like junior. I usually start like around the freshman, sophomore year has kind of been the, the thing. And I was doing that. That was one on one. But I and I would teach here. So I would host a Chuck Jones Center program and I would teach different grade levels, different stuff. And it's art, like essentials of art and painting and stuff like that, how to draw characters how to draw life forms, that kind of stuff. And then obviously we're using, I'm using the Looney Tunes. So <laughs> I'll teach how to draw Bugs Bunny as part of, you know, the thing. And then when we got to pandemic, literally, uh, no joke, a year ago today or tomorrow was yeah. our first live where Craig was like, hey, 
so what if we just did this online because it came to a halt like schools here right. were closed right nothing was happening and so um craig was like what if we uh do the zoom thing and uh let's we'll figure it out we'll draw bugs bunny we'll we'll, we'll do something <laughs> I was like i was like wait you want to what and i said teach online okay let's try it and <clears throat> we had been talking about it but nothing had like come to like a fruition yet there so we started out and we are i think this last week on monday was our 230th class wow <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> so let's see mark i think ben's frozen up a bit i know it's like it these connections sometimes they just kind of go, oh no, we lost him. Okay, <laughs> Maybe he'll log back in. Um, well, yep, here he comes back. So I can ask, oh. hey, we lost you. <laughs> Sorry, I, I looked at him like, why did I stop? Um, I don't know what it cut off. Did, yeah. did you hear the 230th class thing? Yes. And that was got, about the last it, thing. It, the very end of the, uh, you, you and, then you went. The statement and then it cut off. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, um, it's gone the go whole ahead. time and it's every week like i'm taking the month of april off but i teach for them i teach for chuck jones uh the irvine public school foundation classes for them so i've been doing that since last fall mm -hmm. and it just keeps and i've done classes for here for kids in school and everything else so it really ballooned very quickly into this format that i got very used to pretty quick that's really cool okay the other question I have is, um, it mentions that you did a graphic novel, and uh, I don't know if you do any of that if you don't have time for it now, but it, it's uh, The Adventures of Mac and Grunt, is that the name of it? So, <laughs> so tell I, me about that. <laughs> are you familiar with Inktober? Yes. Okay, so I love Inktober. I, I, this was my fifth year doing it. My, my buddy and I took on the challenge, and our goal was to just get through one a day and see what worked. And so it wasn't really, I was just following the prompts. Well, last year I wanted to do something. I did my monkeys. I have, so the graphic novel that I'm writing is Three Monkeys and an Aardvark. Oh, yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the name of my design agency, but that's also, oh, okay. it, started, it started with four characters, and each of the monkeys has a different personality traits that are strong but they independently cannot achieve what collectively they can so it's like an indiana jones wizard of oz type thing that i'm <laughs> writing right now because i've found an absolute fascination with writing and so i'm writing a graphic novel somewhere between 80 and 100 pages and then i'm going to illustrate the whole thing a graphic novel oh. where do i find the time i don't know but i'm finding <laughs> it and um and so the adventures of mac and grunt where my my younger two i have nicknames for all my kids and uh so uh mac is Mi michaela is my four-year-old daughter and we call her mac and um hunter he got the nickname grunt because when he was he, and he still kind of does this in his sleep when he was like an infant he would just grunt I'm like mm, 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 right and so we we're like oh like hunty the grunty right everything's got a rhyme and uh and so it, it ended up just being grunt and, and that's what, and it's hilarious because that's what we call them. So the adventures of Mac and Grunt is about things that go on in the studio, their imaginations and how that works. They love dinosaurs and Jurassic Park. They love the classic Looney Tunes, not the new stuff, um, you know, and, and all the other stuff. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, <laughs> not the same. And um, so, you know, th those kind of things and their influences and, and the way the two play with each other, because they're, they're almost they're like 23 months apart mm. and so the inktober for me was taking all the prompts and being like what is it about this prompt that reminds me of my two smallest children and and then coming up with a one frame story essentially that would explain that and then doing it and then by the time I was done because I had enough forward thinking to be like I could do a little book of this um <laughs> I I had already my layout designed and and I, I mean I'm been a designer since I was 26 and I'm 41. So um, I've been doing it for a long time. I'm fast at it. And so I did my whole layout. I had the whole thing and I'm, and I ended up making this like 40 page book with the sketches and then the full inked things from day one to 31. And so that was my, that was my tribute to my kids, to my youngest two kids and their imaginations and playtime was the adventures of Mac and Grunt, my Inktober sketches. And then I, I printed it. I sold a whole crap load of them. There we go. And, and that became the <laughs> first kind of thing for me of like putting things together because 
the fine art stuff is I have three companies. I've got Three Monkeys and Aardvark Studios, which is design. I've got the Backyard Experience, which is the nonprofit that has the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity Chicago in. And then I have Bionic Squirrel Studios because apparently I love animals. <laughs> and, um, and so Bionic Squirrel Studios is all about the art of Ben Olsen. And that's, that's my fine art stuff. That's the Mac and Grunt, right? That's me expressing myself as an artist, different from me as a designer. So this was like creating products basically that I could be like, um, I could draw that and sell those. That's cool. Cause I am an entrepreneur also. Um, <laughs> and starving artists know the difference is entrepreneurship. So that's how Mac and Grunt came about. And I have this 40 page book that I printed. And so I've got, I've got some here, but, um, sold a whole bunch of them and it, it's, it's a blast, but that got me on that, that kind of writing thing too, where I'm starting mm -hmm. to write. Stuff. So this graphic novel is it's my love child and one day it will grow up. I just don't know when. <laughs> Your kids have no idea. <laughs> no, well, it, the thing about the graphic novel is it's about three monkeys and an aardvark. And, and if you take a look at what I do as a creative agency, the, you need a visionary, you need a planner, you need somebody who can execute the work. I was and, just saying because your kids are too little. Yeah, well, they won't, they'll get it later. <laughs> That, that, that the Mac and Grunt thing is <laughs> because me. they can see themselves in the pictures and they understand it's them. Um, the graphic novel is, is very much about me as a person and <laughs> the journey I've had to go through in some things and using pop culture, you know, like there might be a hammer that conducts electricity. I don't know. Or a, or a <laughs> shield or something. I don't know. <laughs> but that whole idea of, of, you know, finding yourself and then your own faults and how those things domino and doing it in a cartoon, you know, illustrated format. Very cool. Um, I don't have any more questions. Cam, did you have any more at this point? Okay, well, then the thing I always say at this point is, uh, where can people find you? I know right now we're in pandemic, so you're not doing touring around, but uh, how can people contact you, promote your websites, promote books, go through, yeah. go through it all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just now kind of getting where here in Illinois where we can start to do some stuff. So we're going to be back out at the Schaumburg Boomers on June 19th, which is okay. the day before Father's Day, doing our Chuck Jones Big Draw which is a creative thing for the entire family in a baseball game setting. Um, my website is... For the family members who can draw. What's like, that? Like me. For the family members who can draw, unlike me. Everybody can draw. I'll, I'll <laughs> I, had a, I had a lengthy argument with Craig about that, a lengthy one. He says, like, well, I can't even draw a straight line with Rula. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, well, straight line is always the word. I'm like, dude, I can't draw. Like, dude, just, just feel with it. I can't draw. I know you're busy promoting, but I always say, if you can draw numbers or letters, you can draw. <laughs> and that that is an excellent point. So, Camden. I so can. potential. <laughs> you wait till I see you next, buddy. You wait. Uh, so, uh, in person, and we'll we'll bust out some pencil and paper. Mm -hmm. So um, my website for the, for the art stuff that I do in this is uh, Ben Olson hyphen art.com Olson with an O I'm not the Norwegian. I am the Swede. Um, so <laughs> ben Olsen, yeah, ben, ben Olsen, <laughs> Bart, yeah. Anyway. yeah. Well, I, I joke around with my buddies who are like, they go the EN or they're, they're from like Finland and like Norway. And, and I'm like, look, man, I don't have anything against you. Right. But sweet. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> so Ben Olson hyphen art.com. And then, um, at Ben Olson underscore is art is my Instagram. And then I'm on Facebook. So I'm, I'm doing stuff right now. And you know, that that's the online format you can find me in my studios here in Schaumburg, the address is on both. And then I do these art drop things. So are you familiar with an art drop? No. Explain. <laughs> so art drop is where basically I will do a small sketch, right? And, and I'm not, I did not invent this. Friends of mine do it on both coasts. Um, but you, I'll do a small sketch and it's a piece of art and then I will hide it somewhere in the town or wherever I'm at. Hmm. And then I'll give a clue to that. And I'll say, um, you know, I'm east side of Schaumburg. Here's the clue to whatever. Enough. And you got to find it. You got to find it. And the first one that gets it keeps it. But the way I did it was I have two sketches in there. I just so happen to be doing one tomorrow. So <laughs> it's like I've got 
Looking for I've the got, Pinkachu. <laughs> yeah, I've got, a, I've got a pink, right? Cool. So there's pink. And then I've got um, I've got Simba and Timon, right? <laughs> so there's, it's in colored pencil. It's on black paper. And I will hide it tomorrow. And then people, I'm telling you, I've had people steal cars. Um, that's a whole story in and of itself. <laughs> I've had wait, people, wait, you got to explain this. I've had people running red lights, speeding down like, 20, 30 miles an hour over the speed limit to try to get to these things. The fastest someone got it is three minutes. Wow. And I'm like, all I did was they were at a, they were going to a Costco down the street. They saw me post because they're, they, they all stalk my Facebook and Instagram. And as soon as I post it, they're gone. And it's hilarious. I did it for Christmas and I called it the 12 art drops of Christmas. I didn't know if anybody would even care about this right <laughs> and so i did all these sketches in, in part because i wanted to bring some joy right it's the holiday season it's covid it sucks and and i'm like i want to do something happy and i i come to my studio every day i'm in my happy place so i'm going to do the 12 art drops of christmas i'm going to do two sketches you find one and then you have to gift one to somebody else so you can't keep both how do you it's know like, if they're going to do that i'm just pointing that out they all, <laughs> they all do they all do everybody's done it so i did 12 which means i did 24 drawings in couple in two weeks 12 days and it went gangbusters wow. like the yeah that's the stealing car whatever stuff like i one of the clues was drive it like you stole it well there was a car running so one of the women gets in the car and drives it up to me it's like i got i stole the car and i'm like that no that's that i didn't mean steal the car to get the drawing you got to put that car back and so she had to go put the car <laughs> I go park the thing. I'm like, it was in the driver's seat. It was the passenger seat of my buddy's van because we were at his business. That's where I hit it. That's why. I oh, I was. I thought you were actually. They just jumped in a car and just drove to find it. <laughs> no, but they, well, everybody comes to this business because I I say where I'm at, right? I don't think where the drawing is, but I give a clue and I say drive it like you stole it. Now his logo's all over the stuff. I thought, I thought there was a car running at the end of the thing, at the end of the unit. Somebody went through this dude's car and then they pulled it up to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, this guy like got into his car cause he wouldn't, he wasn't really talking to anybody, which why would you at that point? At that, I just let people do their thing. Take my car if you need to. And he drives by us all because somebody found the sketches, right? Awesome. He drives by and he just does this as he's driving by. Right? And then keeps going. <laughs> doesn't stop doesn't say anything it was hilarious so i what i wanted to do is this 12 art drops of 12 20 of 21 which is once a month so last week because i didn't do any in february or january i did two and i did like a tink stitch and tink and i did a couple other things and this is for me this is also a way to practice right mm -hmm. to hone it in so anyway tomorrow i'm doing that i'm going to do a road rally this summer that's going to be psychotic because i'm going to do five and like it's every hour there's stuff to drop and you got to come back to center and then everybody takes off. Wow. I think we're going to traffic problems. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> our art drop, it's turned into this really fun. I do it online too, or I'll hide stuff on my site. Like if you go look at the art drop tab, you can actually see what we've done or what I've done. But um, it's just, it's, it, I like it because I want to bring some happiness to people, you know, and, uh, from all over the place. I've had people win in California and, and other stuff. It's just been a blast. Anyway, there you go. Very cool. <laughs> well, um, I want to thank you, <laughs> Ben, for <laughs> a very enlightening and possibly strange conversation here. <laughs> uh, and uh, thank you, Camden, for uh, bringing me along. And uh, swear, Camden, do you want to promote your... Um, uh, page with jerry beck since yeah you're... i do something called i call it the speed report but everyone's going to pronounce it the spies report so that's what it's called <laughs> so, so um and i just did one on the chuck jones wizard of oz special um and um which i got some rare interviews a little bit too, so you can find it there but you can find my own blog termite terrorist headlines and i'll be back here i swear i'll figure <laughs> out some way to get back here all right well, it's been a pleasure having you both here today on the Fun Ideas Podcast, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Thank All you. Right, thank you.